and Kamaksha, open source software evangelist and also a full cool stack developer. In this video, guys, I'm going to show you how to create a multi step form submission. So, why I'm interested in this activity is just recently I was in need of uh, creating an application in which I need to use multi step form submission, which means a form which is divided into different parts and then finally we, after we fill up the after we put the data inside the forms and we, when we make the submission that should be able to process the data that is what is the multi-step so at times it is not possible for us to use uh, very lengthy forms in one single html file we need to split that into that across different uh, so that is actually the fundamental concept of a multi-step uh, in a form submission I'm going to use two tools here. By the way, in my computer, I have Python. Okay. And I can show you the Python version. Yeah, Python 3 I have. See? And then I also have uh, Flask installed in my computer. So I need the, these are the two uh, requirements for this you know, application. So once again, I'm telling you why I'm interested in this because there are very, very, there is scanty of documentation available from online. Right? There is hardly any online resources available for the tested form submission that, uh, together with uh, Python Flask, uh, I think uh, Python Flask and Zango kind of frameworks are today highly famous, and many people are uh, using these tools in order to create. Uh, you know, the commercial uh, web applications, and I thought uh, this kind of uh, you know tutorial is going to help people who would like to do this kind of activities using hands-on infrastructure for web developments. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to create a Python Flask application. Uh, by the way, Python Flask is a web framework which is highly used by the Python community for individuals who are into this uh, kind of attitude. Uh, in Python community. So I'm going to use Python Flask uh, for server logic and then bootstrap, see here, get bootstrap, bootstrap examples related to tabs and pills. So this, uh, uh, I'm going to use these tabs and pills, uh, you know, examples in order to create a multi-step, multi-tab uh, layout. And under each tab, I'm just going to put a uh, namesake input, uh, you know, tag and those inputs will be used to input the data and later this I use the server in order to read the data from the forms and then uh, and then uh, display it into the web browser okay so without much ado let me this is actually the atom that uh, I already created a, a boilerplate I mean the basic requirements for my web application I need a server file which I then mostly we write it as an app.py. I assume that you know the fundamentals of uh, you know, Python Flask. Uh, usually when we are developing the web applications by using a Python Flask, we create a server file just like this, app.py, and then one folder for the templates. But there are many ways to do this, but you know this is the simplest way to create an application. Now this uh, in a folder, this is what is the home directory for my application, multi-step forms. And this is open inside the autumn editor. You see, I don't have anything inside app. I don't have anything inside this. So I'm just going to throw, I mean, uh, uh, going to write the Python statements inside this app. I mean, server side logic from Flask. Okay, import Flask. I need to, you know functions from this. So these are the functions which I'm going to use to create this. Uh, render template and then uh, request. Okay, these are the three functions. Uh, I'm going to create the app instance. I can also say the initialization of the app. Plus, okay, name. And then I'm just going to create a log. So I can, I mean, uh, Obviously, the other requirements of this, uh, you know, module. Uh, Python is going to 
recognize this particular app file as a, as a module. So if that need to be happened, then I need to write this statement. If main is equal to main, see if this is the main module, then run the app debug is equal to. So I'm going to open this app in debug mode so that whenever I do some changes. Now I'm going to create a route app dot route and that is just going to be the and I, uh, right now I don't need that. I'm going to add the logic for this route def I call this I'm going to create a function Python function and I call it as an index. Now return render template then I create an index file it's already there but it is empty right now. Okay. So inside templates we have a next file. Here I'm just going to here I need to create that uh, you know the basic requirement for the multi-step form submission. Now what I'm going to do, I'll just describe the data from I mean the code chain from the bootstrap so that I can save the time. Uh, I first create HTML file and inside which I put this code so that if I now this uh, you know cancel kills later code this is highly nagging sometimes it works sometimes it won't work so at this point in time I just uh, so my server file is already here and and uh, I have the HTML code required to create the multi tab uh, you know the template and now. I will stop here. This is the minimum requirement for now. I'm going to open my terminal. Okay, the, uh, I'm in the current directory. So Python. Oh, I'm in templates, not CD. Uh, yeah, Python app. So I already said I assume that you know the fundamentals of uh, fast framework. When I press enter, should be able to fetch me the. So now my server is running at this uh, address. Let me go to the browser. And, uh, yeah, this is how it looks like because uh, you know we didn't add the Bootstrap CDN into it. So I just go to the home and then I pick up the CDN statements related to CDN. Show. Sure. Okay, control A can be in there. Come on, just to get a bit separated like this. Well, at times, you know, sometimes what happens very silly things stop nagging uh, and they impact our performance. So that's really a very huge pain in the butt. It gives a lot of pain. Okay, these are all. okay now I added that you know required uh, material in order to. Add some CSS to my. So now when I refresh, you see now everything changes. Now this is actually the problem. So I don't know why this is coming here. Uh, so this is not going. I'm sure this is not going to work. So let me pick up another example. So I'll take up this example. Yeah, this example. So I don't know why that is not working over there. No, it was working in one point in time, but all of a sudden that code is not working. I don't know what is what bullshit is going on here. Okay. Sometimes it works, sometimes it uh, don't work uh, for unknown reasons. Okay, this, uh, our systems, are, we are not very much mature with our systems. Okay, now I think this is okay now. So this works. And that is not working. It was working earlier. So, uh, Hi, this is just I'm just going to add a line which is going to have some as a header so that you know I can just distinguish that uh, multi form submission. Okay. Now when I refresh, you see I just add I just added this line there, so nothing else. Okay, now you see there are three dots because we don't have anything here. So what is this code is? Let me just talk little bit about this code. We are just creating a, 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 a template uh, which is called as a, you know tabbed 
page. This is actually a tab because there are three tabs here. And this page is actually the entire page. You know, one single page and mimics like three different pages. So that is actually the purpose of uh, you know using these tabs and tools. Now we have three different pages. We can do three different activities under these three different you know tabs. Now what happens? I just you know uh, change this. Now I can even talk more about you know there are two uh, sections in this uh, example. So one is for the nav. This is uh, this is nav element or tag in which we have. Uh, a uh, division inside which you we have three links and here you see the href refers to the this is actually the uh, you know the part of the there is another uh, section of the same you know tab uh, uh, template this is for the navigation and this is for the content so that is how it, it's going to work you see here everything is a nav, nav th this is very important if this is missing, then it's not possible for us to organize them as in the form of uh, a tab, set of tabs. This is nav tabs, nav item, nav links. And these are very important. And then ID, role, and then dot data tab, toggle. So these are highly important things. And the same role also happened here. Here the role is tab, and here the role is tab panel. Now here this ID is going to help us to create href link here. Okay, nav home. See here the nav home, something like that. So there are two sections inside this. You know, one is for the navigation and one is for the content. So two sections in this tab, you know, template. Now what happens? I just you know soft line grab this so that uh, the whole code will be. I'm just going to replace this with a number. Okay, and I also might in a different in different lines. So uh, let's see what's going on. Okay. Now I will put this instead of the those three dots are not going to do anything. Okay. Now when we refresh this you see one, two, three. So I just wanted to see what well, sometimes what happens uh, even after you when put that code inside a template, this will become dysfunctional. You, you don't find this in a dynamic You'll be clicking on profile, but it will be still on home, and it will not show you too. So, you, so I'm just going to show you that we have a dynamic multi-tab template in our browser. Okay. Now, what I do is that I just you know create a form and put all this you know all this data inside that. So where do I need to do that? I just leave this nav. I don't touch that nav. I'll come to the where is that? I just leave the, this nav and then I'll come here to the other part of the code and I create a form. Okay. And I dump all this in a second part of that uh, multi tab inside this form. So that now here I replace this one with an input. Okay. And uh, I just leave it as. Uh, and this is just going to be a name kind of thing. Some you know, bullshit don't worry. And here I again uh, I call email and then here I again create an input. Okay, and here instead of three I again I call a password. Okay. And then I create an input. I just leave as text, we don't need to worry. And then just to come out of this last you know the division and create a submit button. This is a type submit and then uh, submit. Okay. Now what happens is I need to create a names for uh, because we are just going to pull this information inside the Python server, you know, to manage. We'll use this data inside the logic, right? So I the first input I give name that is going to help me to identify this particular, you know, the tag in the HTML and get the data related to this input. So this is going to be email, and this is going to be so if you are not able to follow what I am trying to do with forms, I have quite a few other videos, you can just watch them. And now this is password, okay. So I am going to make use of these names to get this data from here, okay. Now let me go back and refresh, you see here now I got uh, profile, contact, 
see, home, profile, contact. And finally, we got the submit, right? No, right now it won't do anything. My name is the name, and when I submit this, it says you can do this. The okay, email and then contact and something else. It's not a contact actually. It should be something else. Uh, this is not the name of the individual, and this is email of the individual, and this is form and the password of the individual. But this is just a bullshit example. Don't care. Okay, I just wanted to show you name, email, password. So we are going to retrieve this data. This is actually the multi-step form submission. I would imagine that we have three different forms. We have only one single form, but it mimics like three different forms. Okay, so when we uh, submit this, right now nothing is happening here. Index is not there. So I, it is not index actually. It is going to be data. So that is what is the template to which I'm going to redirect this information, name, email, and password. So let me go to the app. Now I'm going to create, by the way, uh, this uh, th this route is going to uh, accept data, which means we are going to post. So I need to put methods here. And I'm going to use uh, both the get and uh, post methods. And now, this is just only for posting. This route helps us to post the data. Now I'm going to create a route to handle the data. I mean, to, for processing, to add processing to the data. Now this is just going to, since I mentioned that that's data, and I need to use methods here, because I will retrieve the data from, I'm going to add some logic to this route, that is going to be data. And now here, we have the form. So we need to if request, by the way, so I show that you know all these fundamentals. If request method is post, these are all you know fundamental things one should know to process the forms. Then name, take the name into request form name. So what is this name? This name is coming from here. This is actually, this name has the value associated with uh, an input tag which is named with name. So what is that? Here. This is the input whose name is name. And I'm just going to retrieve the data from that input and save that in this variable called name. Now I'll just uh, copy that a couple of times. Okay, now this is just going to be made. This is also our logic, okay? And the name of the input is email. And now here we have the password, okay? And here we have password. That is the name of the input. Now what are we going to do? So we're just going to read out this information. To I'll just create a, a dictionary of the info. I call a variable info and then this is just going to be the dictionary. In Python, a dictionary is just like this name. I can create a dictionary this way in Python. Email. Sorry, it's not a dictionary, it is a list. I don't know what I'm talking. Password. This is actually a list of the information. I'm going to create a, a data type called list. And I'm, I'm putting all this data inside this list. Now I'm going to redirect this. I mean, it's not data direction. I'm going to Return this information to the front end, which means browser. Return and uh, so these are all actually you need to know how to data dot html. So that is actually the route name. Info is equal to info. So this info is just going. So now I don't have that template here. I'm going to create a template for data dot html. And now I will change your logic and call it as info. So this info is coming from the server. This is actually the template data. And here we have the info. This info is nothing but the info which is coming from this, you know, the route. This is the info. And what is this info? This info has three different uh, elements. Name of the individual, email of the individual, and password of the individual. This is actually the logic. Let's think my server is running here. Yeah, and Oh, okay, methods. 
Okay, yeah, come on, it's nice. Okay, no? Is it okay now? Okay, I'll... I'll just... Why did not close it? Uh, I'm going to start the server refresh. I want and draw speed. Oh, that's it. Oh, we get out. Oh, that's not it. Done. App route and log. I've done that. I don't know. Okay. What's happening? Commit shift. This uh, particular, let me go to the CMD. Okay, this is not CMD as administrator. Okay, and then I'll just go to that uh, CD. Uh, I think the admin D, right? I go to the yeah, I have, yeah, CD. CD work. Yeah, CD, Python work, CD, Mountain. Yeah, here I have it, right? Python, Apple. What nonsense is this? Six in Mountain. Oh, I corrected it. My thirds. Okay. Now the server is running. Last, I don't know what happens sometimes. You see here, you got a uh, you know, multi-step. Uh, now we'll go for name. Yeah, this is my name. Now email, I put some email and password, I put some password. When we submit, you see, you'll, you'll get the. So this is the information coming from name, name, email, email, password, password. Sorry, actually, the data is not coming. Actually, the data is not coming because I did a small, you know, mistake here. This is not, uh, I mean, I enclosed everything inside the, actually, I don't need to do this. Okay, this is a variable. This is not, so that is why it is just, it is trying to print. The variables, that information is not getting updated in these variables. Now I think you should be able to work. The server is running now. Let me refresh. Yes, yeah, now that information comes. Now let me go back. This time I call Lenovo.cs, uh, log, then uh, MCS, head, email.com, and then password, let me use some bullshit. Yeah, MCS, Ronaldo. So now the data is coming to the server and that is getting redirected to the browser. So this way we can just you know why I did once again. It was so I, I was disheartened or I was upset that you know, there wasn't any meaningful uh, and uh, you know the tutorial online as how to make the uh, how to make a you know multi-step form summation using Python Flask. So I thought I should thoroughly do a particular so that it is because today Python is one of the potential platforms for web development and uh, people are using restlessly for different types of applications. So this, hope this uh, video helps uh, many individuals who didn't have, so this is just a basic, uh, you know, demonstration and uh, this can be extended further as per the, you know, the needs of the individuals. So that's for this tutorial, thanks for watching this, I've done so many mistakes, excuse me for that. Uh, that happens, and especially this bootstrap, uh, I'm very much fed up with this. But you know, it's highly useful. We can't do anything, we need to depend on that. Okay, thanks for watching this video, stay tuned for the content, and uh, please subscribe to my video channel and like this video. Thank you.